Hi guys, welcome to this new session of Corporate Finance for CF Level 2. In today's session, we'll be covering the remaining portion of our reading, dividends and share repurchase. So in the previous section, we covered a lot of details about dividends specifically, what all signals they can give in the market and uh, how the taxation of dividends is handled and all the other details. Today, we'll be covering some more details about dividends and then we'll move on to the share repurchase section. So let's start with the first reading itself or the first topic itself, which is payout policies. Now in the previous session towards the end, we covered the various market signals that dividends can send. So if a company decides to start giving dividends or it decides to increase its dividends or decrease it, it could send various signals in the market. And because the company also knows that a lot of people are reading into how much dividend has been declared, they try to keep a very fixed payout policy. They don't want to create a situation where the payouts are entirely random. They try to create a strategy according to which dividends would be paid out. And those are the strategies we'll be covering here. Now, there are two major categories of payout policies. The first one we have is a stable payout policy. It further has two parts, we'll cover them. The basic logic behind stable payout policy is that companies want to make sure that the dividends that they are giving out, they are stable and they are consistent year on year. Companies normally do not prefer a situation where dividends increase or decrease massively from one year to the next. So stable payout policy is saying that companies would try to create a situation where the dividend payout that is consistent from one year to the next year. So within this, the first sort of method you have is known as target payout adjustment model. The target payout adjustment model, what it tries to achieve is, it tries to create a gap between the current payout and what the company wants to achieve. And it tries to create a pathway that the company should follow. So let's take an example that would clarify it further. So let's say right now the current dividend, let's say current dividend is $7 and the company wants to have a target dividend. So maybe in the future they want to increase this dividend to let's say $10. And they want to do this over the course of five years. The basic set of calculation we have for target payout adjustment model is fairly simple. It just says, what's the difference between these two? Basically, I want to create a situation where my dividend is increasing from $7 to $10, but I don't want to do it immediately. I don't want to suddenly do it in one year and give the people an impression that dividends have increased by around 40% or so. Rather, what I want to do is I want to gradually increase it over five years. So the basic calculation, the difference is 10 minus seven, and we divide it by five, or you can even write it as multiplied with one by five. This would give you a 0.6. This 0.6 is the change in dividend per year. So this is saying that if the company has currently a dividend of 7 and it wants to reach to a dividend of 10 over 5 years, it should increase its dividend by $0.6 every year. That would create a stable payout pathway to be followed for the next 5 years so that they are able to achieve their target payout ratios. Now this entire thing is fairly logical and if you understand this, Trust me, there is nothing complicated in the formula that we are going to cover. So let's cover the formula for this as well. Now your syllabus 
covers a specific formula for target payout ratio. So the same thing, change in dividend in any year. So this is in one year. This is known as expected earnings multiplied with target payout ratio. minus previous dividend whole thing multiplied by adjustment factor now this might seem slightly technical or new but this is exactly what we've done basically this ten dollars this is this entire part this entire part whatever the future dividend i am deciding that would be based on what my future earnings are and how much of those future earnings do i expect to pay out to my shareholders as dividends so expected earnings into target payout ratio it's not the current payout ratio it's the target one that we are using here so expected earnings and target payout ratio will give me the target dividend for the future I am then subtracting previous dividend, the current dividend 7, which we have done here as well. So this part is exactly same. Adjustment factor is simply 1 divided by years, the number of years in which you want to make this transition, which is this part. So adjustment factor in our case was simply something like this. So we had 10 minus 7 multiplied with 1 by 5. This 1 by 5 becomes my adjustment factor that every year I will only be making 20% of this entire adjustment. So that is our discussion about target payout adjustment model. So I hope all of this is clear. The second category of stable payout policy is constant payout ratio. Now this is fairly straightforward if you understand the term payout ratio. So we'll quickly recall what payout ratio is. Now companies have some net income every year. Out of that net income they decide to retain some part in the form of retained earnings and the remaining part they decide to distribute to the shareholders in the form of dividends. The amount of money as a percentage of net income which is distributed to shareholders that is known as payout ratio and the second part is simply saying the company would fix a payout ratio so let's say i decide that okay payout ratio would be 20 percent this would mean that in the future no matter what my earnings are i'll pay 20 percent of those earnings out to the shareholders as dividend now this won't necessarily create a stable payout. So uh, in certain cases, you can also consider this as a second category in and of itself, but uh, it's entirely your call whether you want to combine it within stable payout policy or not. So it may create a situation where companies which have stable operations, they will end up getting stable uh, dividends automatically. But companies which work in volatile industries, if they follow this constant payout ratio, in that case, the amount of income they are paying out, the percentage would be same. But if the income is varying a lot, the dividends would also as a result vary 